As Baltimore gets ready to head to Detroit this coming Sunday, one of the biggest things we'll be looking for from the Ravens is consistency. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just The YouTube team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, we're here to talk about the game we got coming up against Jared Goff and those Detroit Lions. Now, in this game, uh, we are facing a much different looking Lions than what we faced uh, over the last eight years because before uh, it was Matt Stafford and the Detroit Lions. And obviously, when you make a big change at quarterback like they did, uh, that plays huge dividends to your team. I mean, look at what the Ravens did when they made a big change at quarterback and how that worked out for them. Uh, but with Jared Goff, Starting off with him, this is a quarterback that is capable of getting it going. He is ca he's, he's been to he's a Super Bowl quarterback, not a Super Bowl winning quarterback, but he's a Super Bowl quarterback. He's played well enough to get his team to a Super Bowl in the past. Um, now he is in a much different situation. He is in a much different environment, and not as a shot to the Lions or anything like that. But I feel like the expectations are much lower uh, with him being in Detroit. But at the same time, that can make him that much more dangerous. That can make the Lions that much more dangerous. Now, in this game, the Lions, their biggest offensive weapon in my eyes is Hawkinson. The tight end, Hawkinson. And the Ravens' biggest struggle is the middle of the field. They have struggled for years to just protect the middle of the field, to cover the middle of the field. Tight ends have feasted. On the Ravens. And I mean, you look at the past two games, Darren Waller, he was the Raiders' go to. Travis Kelsey, he was the Chiefs' go to. Hogginson is the Lions' go to. And you know that like, he's their go to weapon, and they are going to go to him often and early. So in this game, what I want to see is consistency. And when we talk about consistency, uh, last week against the Chiefs, Travis Kelsey was just beating Malik Harrison all night. And again, couldn't be too mad at Malik Harrison because that is Travis Kelsey. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the Ravens, they made adjustments a little late. And it was better late than never, but they ended up bringing out Chris Board. Uh, so I would expect them... Especially because you want to take Hawkinson out the game from jump. You don't want Lions getting into any kind of rhythm whatsoever. I will bring Chris Board out early. If that's going to be your cover linebacker, if that's your best cover linebacker, I will bring him out early. Or even have Tyus Bowser try to cover so between those two, or even bringing in safety help to, to cover uh, Hawkinson, whatever you got to do. Make them go somewhere else with that football. Do not let Hawkinson be their number one target. Remove him from the game. Because for the Lions, if, if Ravens can make Hawkinson, like if they can take him out of the game, that will make things that much easier. Now, staying on Wink on the defensive side of the ball, I expect him to blitz. Now, I know a lot of Ravens fans be like, oh, no, no, don't blitz, don't blitz. You see how it worked against Patrick Mahomes? Look, Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes. Jared Goff is a completely different quarterback than Patrick Mahomes. And the Ravens cannot have this mindset where they like, all right, no, we're just not going to blitz at all. Now, of course, you still want to have success with a three or four man rush. But at the same time, I expect him to blitz a lot more this week than he did last week. And last week, they just didn't want to get burned. They didn't want to get burned. They didn't want to get beat. They just did not want to get taken advantage of due to the blitz. But this, this week, I think they'll have a lot more confidence in the blitz, uh, in the blitz possibly even getting home, uh, but and, and how effective that blitz can be against a Jared Goff. Now, uh, with the Lions, the Ravens' first priority in every game uh, on defense is to stop the run. It's to stop the run. And, of course, the Lions have DeAndre Swift, but they also have probably one of uh, a, a, a guy who's got a lot of new fans uh, in, in the NFL from all of his takes that he's put out, all his videos and stuff, that he, all the clips that you've seen of him, and that would be uh, Jamal Williams. Um, and he has become almost a household name because initially he was somebody that I was not aware of until I kept seeing all the videos and stuff. Um, and he has obviously has a really good sense of humor. But I want the Ravens to not have him smiling at all uh, this coming Sunday. They need to ta ta that tackle, tackle. Because week one and then week two, too, 
they've been struggling with tackling. That has been, the tackling has not been clean, man. So they need to wrap up, like wrap up, tackle from jump. Uh, Patrick Queen, he has certainly struggled over the past two weeks when it's come to tackling. Uh, and another thing, too, with just he's been getting pushed back. So we just want Patrick Queen to go extra hard in the weight room this week because he will continue to be tested. It's going to be like that all season. He's always going to get tested. He's a middle linebacker. So he's got, while he will lead the team in tackles, he's going to continue to be tested. And you want your middle linebacker to be somebody that's going to wrap up and bring these, whether receivers, whether it be tight ends, whether it be running backs, quarterbacks, whatever. You want them to bring the opponent down. Down. You don't want them getting pushed back. You don't want them missing tackles. You got to bring them down because a missed tackle can change not only a play, but it can change a game. Say, for instance, two-yard completion. And the linebacker wraps up, tackle. Okay, two-yard completion, cool. But say, for instance, it's that same two-yard completion. Linebacker misses the tackle. The running back, a wide receiver, they break. And that two-yard completion ends up being a 15-yard completion or even a 20-yard or even a 40-yard or a 60-yarder. Because we've seen it before, but we don't want to see it again. So Ravens have to tackle and tackle well. Marlon Humphrey and Anthony Avery, uh, they need to just continue doing what they've been doing. Uh, Marlon Humphrey, the golf will not be afraid to, or hopefully they make him afraid, and hopefully they don't give him much time to, but he's going to have some deep shots. He's going to try some deep shots. Whether it be on Marlon Humphrey, whether it be on Anthony Avery, whether it be on Tavon Young, whoever it may be on, he's going to try it. So Marlon Humphrey, and really uh, Anthony Avery too, he wasn't tried with any deep passes uh, last week, but um, it's important that they get their heads turned around. It's important that the tracking on the ball is on point this week because although Detroit is still early in the season, now Detroit hasn't been looking like a good team, but all it takes is a couple of sparks and a little bit of confidence and a team that's 0-2, they can have all the confidence in the world, especially if they're playing a team like the Ravens and they get some stuff going, especially through the air. That's all it takes. So Ravens need to make sure that does not happen. And for the most part this year, as far as the deep ball, they've been uh, guarding, covering that pretty well. I know Marlon Humphrey did give up the touchdown last week against the Chiefs. Um, and he did give up the touchdown in overtime against the Raiders. Uh, but overall, <laughs> besides those couple of plays, Ravens have been covering the deep ball well. So hopefully that continues. Right now, as of the recording of this video, we do not know the status of one Deshaun Elliott. He did leave uh, the game on Sunday night against the Chiefs with a concussion. So we'll see what happens with him. Brandon Stevens came in, uh, but then he got benched for Geno Stone. So we don't know what the status of the safeties is as of right now. So we'll know that maybe by the time you see this video uh, or not. We'll know that over the next couple of days. Um, and pass rush. Adafi away. Keep doing what you've been doing. Keep doing what you've do been doing. And it's important that Wink, Wink finds mismatches. Uh, and, and Wink just really lets his guys get after and lets his guys stay out there so they can get in the rhythm. You see, Adafi away, he was out there a lot. He got into a rhythm. He got better. He made game-changing plays. And this guy is a rookie. He's not playing like a rookie, but he is a rookie. This is first year in the NFL, and he's been making his impact from jump. So it's important that Wink, as much as we talk about it with offense, it has to happen on defense. You got to go with your hot hand. If guys out there making plays, they out there looking good, stick with them. Yeah, you want your guys to remain fresh. You want to have a nice rotation and all that. But if a guy's hot, leave him in. Let him do his thing. Um, so that would be that would be pretty much it with, for the Ravens defense. Now, um, special teams. Justin Tucker, this was the team that Justin Tucker kicked that super long field goal on Monday Night Football against. Obviously, different team, different coaches, different quarterbacks, different players, different all that stuff, but same franchise. Justin Tucker, we just expect him to continue doing uh, what he's been doing. Uh, and just the consistency. Sam Cook, I don't really expect him to get a lot of action. I know over these past couple of weeks, I believe in both games, the Lions have allowed at least... Five touchdowns each in, in, in their first two games of the year. Uh, so with the Ravens, I expect them to continue that. Um, I, I, expect, I expect this game to be something like 
I had expected week one against the Raiders to be. Um, I, I want to see those week one Ravens, not the 2021 week one Ravens, but the normal week one Ravens, where they just come out, they're strong, they, they, they're firing away, they're taking advantages of mismatches, and they just, they dominate. Uh, I, I do expect this to be a game that's really dominated by the Ravens. I expect their offense to do really well. Uh, one thing that I'm going to look for, the consistency like we talked about, but the consistency with both Hollywood and Sammy Watkins, but also use this game to try to get Devin DuVernay involved a bit. Maybe even a little bit of Prochet, maybe some Wallace. I know it's only one ball and they can't really go around to everybody like that, but try to sprinkle in some DuVernay a little bit here and a little bit there just to get him going because you don't want him to be cold. And not that he can be so cold because he is on special teams. He's a punt and kick returner. But you want to get him sprinkled in on his offense because, you know, Duvernay, he can make some plays happen. So I want Greg Roman and Lamar Jackson to find a way to get Devin Duvernay involved. Something with Lamar Jackson, since we're speaking about offense, uh, an improvement that I want to see from him uh, in this game is the deep ball. The last two weeks, he's missed a couple of opportunities with the deep ball. Um, with Hollywood against the Chiefs, he missed early on in the game. I think first drive, he missed the deep ball. Then the following play, end up throwing an interception. So if he would have hit that deep ball, then that interception doesn't happen. But that's why every play made it matters that much more. And if you're missing deep balls, if you're missing the long shots, then you're leaving points, you're leaving yards, and you're leaving all of that stuff on the field. And you can't do that. No matter what team it's against, you cannot leave. And, and, and you end up leaving points on the field. So you can't do that. Um, and, and speaking of Lamar, too, not just with the deep ball, but we, we need to see the turnovers stop. Because if we look at the, the Raiders game, two fumbles lost. We look at the Chiefs game, two interceptions. And both of those turnovers, all four of those turnovers, excuse me, turnovers from both games, they kept the opponents in the game. You eliminate those two turnovers in, in each game, Ravens are probably... 2-0, and they are probably a convincing 2-0 too, especially over the Chiefs, because again, remember when the Chiefs touched, and not to say that Patrick Mahomes, you know Patrick Mahomes, they could could have easily got a touchdown back, but you never know, because Ravens spotted them a touchdown with that pick six, so Lamar got to cut down on the turnovers, have to, because that's, that's not going to fly, if, if it kept up like that all season, it's not going to fly, especially come playoff time. But in order to even get to the playoffs, you got to cut down on the turnovers. And I don't expect him to go out here and turn the ball over twice every game. That's not Lamar football. There have just been some unfortunate circumstances over these past two games. But I expect him to clean that up big time. Because they, they, they cleaned up the fumbles. Because he was, he was getting tackled on uh, Sunday Night Football against the Chiefs. So they cleaned up the fumbles. He didn't fumble the ball. But the, the interceptions, that, that can't be a thing. Um, Tyson Williams. The Ravens need to continue riding with him, continue riding with the hot hand. Uh, Tyson Williams is going off against the Lions. Ride it out. Ride it out. Of course, they're going to sprinkle some more Devontae Freeman in here, too, and Latavius Murray. He'll still be in there as well. But ride with that hot hand. Now, Tyson Williams, he needs to continue doing what he's doing, except he needs to stop with the fumbles. The fumbles, again, turnovers are an easy way to keep a team around, especially when it's a team that not, and this, again, no disrespect to the Lions, but especially if it's a team that shouldn't be hanging around with you, that's an easy way to keep them in the game. Easy way. So Tyson Williams got to hold on to that ball. I hope Ravens give him the Alex Collins treatment to where they really work on those fumbles because it's so big, and, and that can really propel his career that much forward. He got to take advantage of this opportunity. You don't get opportunities like that. He's, he's not even supposed to really even be here right now. Well, he probably would have ended up in a, being a third running back. But his situation should not even be happening right now because we're supposed to have Gus Edwards. We're supposed to have J.K. Dobbins, even Justice Hill. But the situation is what it is, obviously, so he got to take full advantage of it. And the fumbling, he got to cut that down. So I expect him to continue doing what he's doing. Patrick Ricard uh, continue being a nice lead blocker. They've been moving him out at tight end and all that, putting him next to the, uh, the offensive line, and he's been blocking well. So that's the norm for Patrick Ricard. And speaking of the offensive line, will this be a game where we get Ronnie Stanley back? I don't expect it, but hey, we'll see. Um, but the offensive line has to continue to block well, open up the running lanes, and, and keep Lamar Jackson upright. 
protect him. They did a great job of doing that against the Chiefs. Like, you wouldn't have even known that Frank Clark or Chris Jones even played in the game last week. You wouldn't have, you wouldn't have even known. By the way that the offensive line was protecting Lamar, just great. They did a phenomenal job of it. I was just shocked, and I was glad to be shocked, especially for how they were against the Raiders the, the previous week. But um, that, that needs to continue. That has to continue because everything starts in the trenches. Everything starts with the offensive line. Everything starts up front. So that offensive line, they, they have to be ready. Mark Andrews. I expect a, a, a bigger game, probably a bigger game for Mark Andrews in this game than he got combined the last two games. I expect Mark Andrews to have his sort of breakout, his coming out party uh, this week against the Lions. Um, and, and him, you know him and Hogginson, they they going to be going back and forth. They're going to be watching each other. They're going to be watching each other numbers and stuff like, oh, okay, he did that. All right, you know what, let me try to do this. But I think Mark Andrews is going to get the best of them uh, simply because Ravens just, it's weird to say it, but they have more weapons. They have more weapons, uh, and of course, it all starts with the quarterback position. Lamar Jackson is a weapon himself, uh, but then everything surrounding him. I think the, the Ravens are built a little stronger than the Detroit Lions are uh, on offense. So it's up to them to take full advantage of that, for Greg Roman to get different guys involved, and again, just continue the consistency. The offense has to continue to put up drives, stack points, man, stack drives, stack points, keep moving that ball downfield. Keep moving it downfield. Uh, we don't want drives stalling out. We don't want drives to get stopped. Do we expect them to score on every single drive? No, we don't. It would be nice if they do, but we don't expect them to. But I do expect them to overall just have a great game. Um, as far as a score prediction for me, uh, I would say probably 30, 38. I say 38-17, something like that. I think this would be... Uh, the first decisive win of the season, the first convincing win of the season uh, for the Ravens. And it just, I think they, they really got to build off of that KC game. Now, I know that that game was emotionally exhausting. It was a lot. So Ravens could come out in this game and start off a little bit slow. Just based off of the last game and just everything that that was. But I do expect them to really get rolling both on offense and on defense. And again, if they can take out Hawkinson. If they can take him out of this game, that will put them just in, in, in phenomenal shape. And if they not only take him out, but also if they can con consistently get to Jared Goff, that will be a huge difference maker uh, for the Ravens. But I, I do expect them to win this game, um, not overlooking the Lions at all, because it is any given Sunday, as we know, because uh, we've been on both sides of the football with Ravens expected to blow somebody out. And like again, well, there was a Jaguars game Monday Night Football a long time ago. I forget the year. We we just knew them Ravens were gonna they were gonna destroy the Jaguars. Ravens lost like twelve to nine or something like that. Offense just could not get it moving. Defense was holding it down. It was an ugly game, and Jaguars end up winning. And then we've also been on the flip side of it too. The Ravens expected to get just dog. They expected to get beat. Like the the playoff game against the Broncos, uh, the Mile High Miracle. Um, and then even the following week against the, the Patriots, like the AFC, just the, 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 the kings of the AFC at that time. They were running the show. And the Ravens obviously took care of business. Uh, and then even in, in the Lamar era, too, we've seen it. Ravens expected to blow out this team here and there. Oh, they don't do it. But then they, they expected, oh, man, Ravens could lose this. Nope. They flipped the script. So... You just you just never know, but I, I do expect the Ravens to take care of business uh, in Detroit. So, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Looking forward to a really, really good game uh, from Baltimore, and hopefully they hold it down. We out. <laughs>